We now proudly go to a second round, starting with Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hicks, in my first round, uh, I asked you about Cheryl Mills, and you indicated in your response that this is a call that you always take but, frankly, don't want to get. Uh, Cheryl Mills is the counselor to the secretary. Uh, she is chief of staff to Hillary Clinton. And is it, is it a common, is it common knowledge that of anyone in the State Department, when then, when the chief of staff to the secretary calls, that is the perception that she is speaking on behalf of the secretary herself? No, but not, is, is not necessarily. Not necessarily, but but is the perception that it's um, pretty darn important based on your response earlier? Absolutely. Yeah, so you, you got this call. I want to go back to the, um, to the Chaffetz, uh, to Congressman Chaffetz's visit there. You were instructed that there was going to be an attorney accompanying Mr. Chaffetz, and this attorney was to be next to you at all times. I mean, here, here's what I'm trying to get at. The Secretary has said nobody, she, in front of the Senate, nobody is more committed to getting this right. If the intent is to get it right and get to the truth, then why this concerted effort to shield the interaction of Congressman Chaffetz from you? That's what I'm not figuring out. If we want to get to the truth, shouldn't you and Mr. Chaffetz be able to have a dialogue and conversation without some babysitter from the State Department, some lawyer there monitoring, taking notes, calling back, doing all things that this individual did on that congressional visit? I should be able to have a conversation with the congressman if he wants to. And didn't you say, in my, in, in, excuse me, uh, Mr. Didn't you say, Mr. Hicks, in my first round that this was the first and only time this had ever happened, where someone from the State Department accompanied a congressional visit, and you were instructed specifically by the State Department, do not talk to Congressman Chaffetz or anyone on the committee's delegation who is there without this lawyer being present. That's correct. And shortly after the one time when you did have a chance to interact with Mr. Chaffetz and the lawyer was not present, when it was not present, you got a phone call from Cheryl Mills. That's correct. And on that phone call, what did she say? She asked for a report on the visit, which I provided. Uh, the tone of the report, the tone of her voice was um, unhappy, as I recall it. Uh, but I faithfully reported exactly how the visit uh, transpired. I described the content of the briefing that... Can I interrupt you right there, Mr. Yes. Hicks? Were you in a classified briefing at the time and were pulled out of that briefing to talk to Ms. Mills? I recall the phone call afterwards. Okay. I, I was pulled out um, of the briefing, but I, I don't recall that that was the time when I talked to Councilor Mills. What were you pulled out of the briefing for? Um, I actually, actually can't remember, to okay. be honest with you. But in close proximity to the time you had the briefing, the one time you were apart from the minder from the State Department, you, got, you received a call from Ms. Mills? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I just, I just want to stress, I mean, this is, this is the equivalent of Rahm Emanuel when, he, when he's chief of staff. When he calls, for my colleagues on the other side, when he calls, you take the call. You understand that's important, and you understand that he is representing the White House. When Cheryl Mills calls, you understand, everyone in the State Department understands, this is the person right next to Secretary Clinton. And the fact that we had, for the first time in Mr. Hicks's 22-year history of serving this country, someone accompany a congressman on a visit after we lost four American lives, and that individual has to be in every single meeting. There can't be personal interaction between these two discussing what took place. is completely unprecedented. With that, I'd be happy, to, the, yield. Gentleman yield. Be happy to yield to the chairman. Mr. Hicks, you and I have known each other uh, throughout the Middle East for a number of years. Uh, but in all my years of traveling in the Middle East, any time I was head of a congressional delegation, I had a one-on-one -on -one with the ambassador, often in an automobile going to see a head of state or something else. Over the years that you've watched great ambassadors, have you ever failed to see the 
head of a delegation coming get a one-on-one? -on -one? Isn't that part of sort of the ceremony of that relationship and how you treat the head of a congressional delegation? Not just this is an exception, but isn't it always a one-on-one -on -one meeting at some point during a, a leadership meeting? In every CODEL that I have been involved in, that has been standard. So they were telling you to, uh, a non -confer Senate confirmed, a political appointee of the Secretary of State, her right hand person was telling you to breach protocol? Well, I, the, the two lawyers did. The conversation, oh, the two? The, the conversation with Councillor Mills occurred after. Okay, so it, it was in fact people sent by the State Department told you to breach protocol and not to provide anything, even if requested by uh, my personal emissary, Mr. Chaffetz, on that CODEL. Told you not to, not to talk to him privately, even if he asked. That is correct. Thank you. I thank the gentleman for yielding. 